Hi guys, it's your Minecraft here. Welcome to another Minecraft mod tutorial. Today I'm going to teach you how to make a Minecraft 1.10 mod. Now, this is going to be a two part video just for setting this up because the first part is just going to be like the main setting it up, and the second part is going to be all the like beginning coding that you need to do. Some of it you need to do, some of it's extras, but that's what I'm going to do. So, yeah, so straight into the tutorial. All these links that I'm going to be doing today will be in the description of this video. And first thing that you need to do is download Java JDK. Now I'm going to be downloading Java JDK, JDK 8, mainly because it runs better. And also, without this, you'll get a warning on Minecraft when it boots up. So all you need to do is click Accept License Agreement. I'm going to be doing one I want. I've already got this installed. And now, you need to know whether you're 64-bit. Now, the way to see if you're 64-bit, open up your Windows Explorer. Go to this PC, right click on this PC, click properties. And as you can see, it's got all the system details. And what you're going to do is just want to have a look at here. It's 64 bit. So if you're 64 bit, it's times 64. 32 bit times 86. And just download and install that. And we'll do that in a bit. Next, what we're going to do is download Minecraft Forge from this link in the description. We're going to be doing it for 1.10.2. But you need to download the MDK. So just click the download on the MDK. It will put you to this um, website. It's a bit like Ad, uh, AdFly. But it's for Forge. So just wait the allocated time. And yep. Click skip. And there you go. Now I'm just going to click open folder. And that will open up my downloads. Great. So we can close that. Next we need to download Eclipse. Now I've already got Eclipse installed down here, but I'm going to be getting the new Eclipse, which is Neon, for me. It looks quite cool. So click download 64-bit. And what you want to do is just click uh, download. And what we're going to do is, once it's downloaded this, we're going to open and install this. Okay, so I'm going to click run. And... We're just going to open it up and it's gonna, we're going to just tell it to download this Eclipse Neon. Now, I've never used Eclipse Neon, but I've used the other Eclipses, such as Mars and Luna. So, yeah, I've currently got Mars, so this will load up a little installer, which is actually quite sweet. And all we want is the default Eclipse, Eclipse Neon, and it's the top one, Eclipse IDE for Java developers. And Java Neon, create, start, menu, entry... Uh, no, and uh, no, click install, and now we'll install it. Now, what we need to do is go to download. Here's the MDK that I just downloaded. Now, I want to select all of these and right click and copy. Now, you want to find an area where you want to put your mod. No, mine's in this coding Minecraft, Minecraft mods, and I'm going to make a new folder and I'm going to call this folder bit of everything. 1.10.2 now i'm not going to put any spaces in i think that messes up the later stuff so don't put any spaces and all you want to do is control v here so that'll just paste everything that we need now we just leave that to install in the backdrop now what we need to do is actually edit an environment variables now here's a massive warning do not delete any so on this system thing that we did just Click on Advanced System Settings and Environment Variables. Now, I've already got this set up here, and you can copy this. You need to click New, type in Java underscore Home, and then in the value, what you need to do is find where your Java is. So, on Windows 10, it's this PC. On uh, other versions, I think it's computer. Uh, just go to Windows 7 is what mine's called because I originally was Windows 7 if you're on 64 bit it'd be in a normal program file if you're on 32 bit it'll be in this one I'm 64 bit so it's in this one go to Java now I've got JDK 1.8.0 which is what we're going to be doing and all you need to do is select this control C and in environment environment variable just copy and paste this I've already got this set up here and you can also get that from the description uh, I'm on 71, that's 101 now. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to update this environment variable. So let's just open up this. 
Control V, that's updated. Click OK. Do not delete any of these. Press OK and OK. And that should be that done for that. So Eclipse has now finished installing. If you clicked exactly what I did, you'd have to find this directory, which is just an Eclipse folder in your user area. Click the version, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to unpin this one, which is Java Mars, and just pin this one. And we're going to be using this later on. So we can close that now. And yeah, we can just get rid of that. We don't need this anymore. And what we can do now is in here, we've got everything copied. So you want to make sure that you've got the absolute path of where it is. Now, on Windows 7 and 8, you just right click and open um, file, uh, open file directory, I think it's called, something like that. Mine's already done like that, that's just how it is, so just make sure you're in the absolute directory and go shift, right click, open command window here. Now, this is really small for me, I don't know why. Um, I don't know how to change that, so I'll zoom in on that for you guys, and what you want to do is type in gradlu setup decomp workspace and then eclipse make sure to include eclipse and hit enter now that's actually going to build it and this uses the environment variable that we just set up to work so what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to leave this to run through all of the building of it it'll create some more files for us and yeah we just wait for it to do that okay so it's just finished took five minutes to do which is not too bad um if this doesn't work for you if you just type in exactly the same and do dash dash debug that'll just debug it it'll come up with a lot more but that should tell you the error but it's worked fine for me now what i to do is open up eclipse and eclipse neon doesn't it just look beautiful so so beautiful this eclipse neon and yeah let's just wait for this eclipse neon to actually open up and what you want to do this, this is the default one I'm going to browse for a new one, and what you going to do is go to your area where you've got your mod, and uh, mine is bit of everything 1.10.2, now you need to put it in the Eclipse folder, and press OK, click OK, and now we should just be able to load up this, and just got to change, tweak some settings, say, at the moment so you should see mdk example that works now this should be java i hope it's java. yep it is java i'm going to close task list outline problems java doc this is just personal preference and um what i'm also going to do is click this little view menu i'm going to go to package presentation and hierarchical go to mdk example it should actually already have this java stuff done here and we can just delete this, OK. And got this mcmod.info which can fill in. We're not going to fill that in now, we're going to fill that in next time. And what we can do is, before we actually run this, this is how you run it. You want to go to Run Configurations. You want to go to Augments. And here is the other project location slash run. What you want to do is edit this and go File System and go all the way to where your mod was again so I'm just going to find where my mod was right here and you'll put this in the run folder now sort that out, click apply now we can actually change the arguments which is how much RAM now RAM just tells the computer how much of its random access memory can it use now at the moment it's set to a gig which is 1024 I'm going to set mine to 8 gigs just so I shouldn't experience lag hopefully so if you just load the calculator, the way to work out convert it to gigs from megs is just 1024, which is 1 gig, times by how many gigs you want, mine's 8. Uh, I know that I can do 8 safely because mine's a 16 gig machine. Um, I've bought another stick of RAM for it. Uh, if you're on a laptop, max, I would say it's going to be a 4 gig machine, so I'd say just leave it. If you're on a desktop, it might be 8 gig, so maybe just give it 2 gig. But I'm going to put 8192, and you want to change it on both of these, 8192, click apply, and we can just close this now, we can just click run. 
knows to run the client for the first time. And you've got the console here. I just like to minimise it and it puts it up there. I don't know why I like that. I just do that for personal preference. Now, if you want to force close it, it's just this one here. Now, as you can see, the default system library is actually 1.8, which is great. Because if we did it on the 1.7 one, a Java 7, it would tell us something. I've, I've had this error before myself, and I can show you how to fix this. If you say, if it boots up, and it gives you a warning saying uh, you're on Java 7, all you need to do is go over to here, right click, properties, go to Java build path, and it's libraries, right down on the bottom, you have the JRE system library, you want to add library, JRE system library, and just go to alternate, and go and install JREs, add a new JRE, standard VM, and then the home, it's just where you find the JRE, which is just the path that we put into Java underscore home variable, but I don't need to do any of that. And as you can see, we've got a game that's loaded up. Now we're just going to make a test world called test. Now it has got sound on. I'm going to sort out my settings in a second. But it is a 1.10 world, so we can do the void, which is great. And we should see everything from 1.10 working in this, hopefully. We shouldn't be getting any problems with this at all, which is amazing. I'm just going to turn off the music because it really annoys me, so... And what I'm going to do, I'm going to just do the daylight cycle to false and time set 6000, which just sets the time to midday, which is great. F3D to clear chat. You can open the inventory, obviously you can change your controls. You can tell it's 1.10 because we have all these new blocks, magma blocks that set you on fire in survival. Yep. So yeah, we've got a working 1.10 mod. Now, you can't see anything yet. But as you can see, you've actually a player, it's not actually yourself, it says player 430, this will change every time you run this. So yeah, thank you guys for watching, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. Check out the next tutorial, I am out.